Hey folks, listen carefully to the words in this intro because they're more important today than they were just barely over a year ago when I first recorded them. There exists a threat from anti-hunting groups to politicians trying to give our land away and we won't stand for it. Those vast western landscapes provide the space for our wildlife to thrive and a place for hunters and anglers to fuel the fire that sparks their soul. In this show, we share our love of hunting, fishing, and conservation. Here, we provide the foundation to meet these threats through passion and the grit of the American outdoorsman. Welcome to the Western Huntsman Podcast. guys welcome to another bonus episode of the western huntsman podcast this is jim huntsman your host and i'm coming at you you know it from the broken time studio right here in hayden idaho um guys this is a this is a bonus episode we have uh something that has come up actually you know there's a few things that have come up lately uh but this one in particular is is specifically uh really alarming to us as hunters. And so I, I felt like it was important for me to jump on, uh, get behind the microphone here and just talk to you guys for a minute. You guys know, you know, I'm a, I'm a father and my wife and I, we have four daughters. Uh, two of them are still home on the payroll, uh, all that fun stuff. Um, my, my, a huge focus in my life is, is bringing my girls up to be outdoorsmen, um, or outdoors women. Uh, I don't know how to say that. I know there's, there's a lot of nuance in it, and it's thanks to a lot of the people that we're going to be talking about in, uh, in this episode. There's a lot of, a lot of BS in, in what we call it, but I'm, I'm teaching my girls to grow up, uh, to be outdoors enthusiasts. They're hunters, uh, they're, they're campers. Uh, they've got more grit than some of the, some of the folks I see that are, that are in their twenties and thirties out there. Um, and I'll just leave that at that. But I'm worried about their future. I'm worried about the future of all of our youth. We live in this weird time where folks that don't see eye to eye with us or vice versa feel like the fact that we don't see eye to eye means that they have to shove their beliefs down our throats and change the way that we live our life. This is especially alarming. This is super alarming. This is what, the the stuff that I'm going to be talking about is why I started this podcast. Because I I do worry about the few, I I know I've said it a few times in the past that, you know, um, that we've got some bright things happening in our future as hunters and outdoorsmen and sportsmen and conservationists and all this, all these things that I've talked about in the past. And I do see some positive things happening. We've got some changes. We've got some positive growth in certain areas that are, that are important indicators for the future of being an, an outdoorsman in the United States of America and in Canada. I, I, I can't stress enough to you that, we we have a threat. We have these threats, and it's a big deal. And you, if you guys have been paying attention on social media and some of the news outlets and, and things like that, you're going to be familiar with the California Senate Bill-252, which is an outright ban on black bear hunting. And this is introduced by Democrat Senator of San Francisco, um, I, I don't have it in front of me. I, I believe it's district seven or some, I'll, I'll double check that here in just a minute. Uh, but Senator Scott Weiner has introduced this legislation and it is going to be coming up for a vote. Now I'm sure if you've, uh, li- if you listen to this show in the past, you could probably tell a, a difference in my tone of voice and how I'm delivering this show. It's because I, I'm not just disappointed. I'm not just frustrated. I am flat out pissed off that something like this is being introduced in a a state legislative session in the United States of America. Before I go there, let's let's back this up for just a second. What 
what is a what is a and I'm going to try to tread as lightly as possible with this following uh, little line of commentary I'm going to offer. What is a bigot? You've all heard it, especially with the the political climate lately, um, and and a lot of people on one one side likes to call the people on the other side a bigot, and we're going to fight against bigotry and yada yada yada. They don't really know what that uh, that means. What is a bigot? Let me just give you a, a quick explanation of bigotry. A bigot is a person who is intolerant of opinions, lifestyles, or identities that are different from his or her own. So that is that is uh, one of the, I, I want to say that's the Wikipedia version or whatever, uh, maybe it's a Webster dic- Dictionary pers- uh, uh, definition of, of, of a bigot. I'm trying to read and talk at the same time here, and, and so bear with me, but... And and obviously, I've I've known this for a long time, but I wanted to give the formal definition because what is a bigot? I'll tell you what a bigot is. It's somebody that knows nothing about wildlife management and conservation and hunting and, and what we do as outdoorsmen and sportsmen and conservationists. And they try to legislate their beliefs onto us because they don't believe in it. They don't believe in that pursuit and that lifestyle. They think that it's okay to eliminate that lifestyle for those of us that do. Folks, that is bigotry. That is exactly what bigotry is. And I'm pissed off that I even have to have this freaking conversation. We as hunters should not be dealing with this. We we have this, and, and let me start by saying, now I, I know that I have Democrats listening in this audience, and and many of you are my friends, and the, the, the reason we're friends is because you're a normal Democrat. You're an American Democrat that is still reasonable. You are still, you still believe in the ideal of America, in freedom, in self-reliance, in advancement, in capitalism, in a free society. You believe those things. You just have a little bit different vision as to how those are achieved. So when I say I'm talking about a California liberal, you, the, I am not bunching you into that group because there is a difference. Idaho Democrats, Montana Democrats, Arizona Democrats, Utah, um, Colorado, Wyoming, all those kind of Democrats. Those are different Democrats than the kind of Democrat that I'm talking about in this. The liberalism, the the extreme psychotic liberalism that comes out of California can affect the rest of us in the rest of the country. They live in a different world. It is a different approach to legislation. They have a different fundamental belief in what a government means to the day-to-day life of of an American. And I'm I'm not trying to get political here, but this has become political. And, and so what I, I guess one way to explain it is if, if you're on social media and you're not living on some other planet, you have noticed the insane political climate that we've been going through uh, this, this past election year, right? And people are stressed out. Before things were finalized, people were very stressed out on both sides. They, and, and, and they were pressed out, or I'm sorry, they were stressed out over, over a presidential election, And here's my problem with that. A president in the federal government in the United States of America should not have such a huge impact on our day-to-day lives that we stress out about it. That is not the way this country was founded, and it's not the way that the founding fathers envisioned the foundational premise of our government operating. The federal government was set up for national defense and infrastructure, not to determine how we teach our children, how we get health care, how we hunt bears, how we do this, how we do that. The, the presidential election should not fire people up like it has been over the last couple of decades, and, a, and especially this, this very last one. A president should not be that con- consequential on your life in the United States of America. Period. You can't argue that point. It should not be that big of a deal to us because the federal government is supposed to be very limited, small, uh, limited in scope. We, we have gotten off track. We have gotten off track. And now here I am 
going gray, losing hair over a bill coming from a state legislator in California. So let's talk about that for a minute. In California, like I mentioned earlier, we have this SB 252, and this is basically an outright ban on black bear hunting. Um, black bears, just before we get into the nuts and bolts of this, uh, in the state of California, have have significantly gone up in population uh, over the last uh, you know 20, 30 years. In fact, where did I have that? I have that pulled up here on my my computer. Um, Okay, California's black bear population has increased over the past 25 years. In 1982, the statewide bear population was estimated to be between 10,000 and 15,000 bears. Today, the statewide black bear population is conservatively estimated to be between 30 and 40,000. So to, to, to you California legislatures that um, are, are wanting to take issue with something like black bears, one thing to take into consideration Before we even talk about how the population of black bears has significantly and dramatically increased over the last couple of decades, is you have in the state of California a population of homeless people that is four and a half times larger than the black bear situation and population that you have in California. Why in the hell are you wasting your time dealing with a solid management plan in the state of California where these black bears are thriving when you have a homeless population that is 4.5 times that of the bear population? Just curious. Just curious where your priorities lie. Because that's a problem. What in the world does somebody legislating in, in, in San Francisco meddling into hunting black bears. What do you know about black bears? What do you know about wildlife management? What do you, you I, I looked, I looked Senator Scott Weiner, and I'm trying to be respectful because I, I did invite him on, but I'm fired up and I'm, I'm ticked off right now. I did invite him on. I haven't heard back yet, but if I, I hope he does, I hope he chooses to come on. I promise if you're listening to this, uh, Senator Weiner, Uh, I will be calmed down at that point and we can actually have a discussion so that you can justify to me and my audience why you think you should stick your nose into wildlife management in the state of uh, California. It's an inapplicable position for you to have. I'm going to switch over to this ridiculous, um, and I'll link this in my website, or I'm sorry, on the show notes, guys. Um, I'll link this in the in the on the webs uh, in the show notes the Humane Society uh, article that just pulled up. Uh, I just pulled it up on my computer here. It's called "California Lawmaker Introduces Bill to Ban Black Bear Hunting." Okay, let's. Uh, ju- I'm not going to read this whole thing, but we're gonna we're gonna kind of break this thing apart because this is kind of from what I've heard and what I've read and what I've researched. This is kind of the foundational. Uh, the, uh, uh, I guess um, I don't want to call it scientific piece because there's there's absolutely no science in it whatsoever. Uh, but this is kind of where this Senator Weiner is is uh, basing his argument to ban black bear hunting is is coming from uh, from from this article. And uh, just to put it into kind of a better perspective, it was released on January 26, uh, 2021, and the it is by obviously the Humane Society of the United States, which is obviously not a friendly hunting organization. Uh, This is an organization, and I don't mind just saying it right now, this is an organization that uses little facts and lots of emotion uh, to base their theories and their blog articles and their publications and all these things that they put out that is just garbage. It's garbage. In fact, people are dumber after reading it. And if you work for the Humane Society of the United States and you're offended by me saying that, shoot me an email at Jim at the Western Huntsman and I'll get you on the show and we'll talk about it. And I'll explain why I feel people are dumber after reading your bullshit. Okay, back to this article. It starts out like this. A groundbreaking bill introduced in California today would end all trophy hunting of black bears in the state. All right, so that first sentence right there, when when we look at that, when you're looking at the way that that's written, it's 
it's biased and it's it's the way it implies that black bear hunters in the state of California are just trophy hunters as if they don't take the meat as if they grow antlers or they are strictly hunting the most mature biggest baddest brown black bear that they could find in the state of California and that's it let me explain something to you humane society and senator senator wiener black bear hunting is not a trophy hunt they are not, not every hunter is a trophy hunter. And that's how this article starts out. It starts out just by painting every hunter as a trophy hunter. Would end all trophy hunting of black bears in the state. As if there's no other kind of hunting in the state of California. Let me ask some of you guys in California something that, that goes out and hunts black bears. Are you guys taking trophy black bears every time? Is it a trophy hunt for you? Do you just get to hide in the skull? Do you take the meat? Do you do anything with the meat? No. None of, we, we know the answer to all of these questions. To continue, I quote, If successful, California would be the first state to impl- implement such a ban, comma, setting a magnificent precedent for the rest of the nation to follow. That's where I get nervous. Some of you may ask me, well, what are you getting uh, involved in California politics for and, and California wildlife management and things like that? Here's why. The liberal shitstorm that comes out of the psychotic extremism out of California bleeds over into the rest of the country. It does. It bleeds over. And and I, in multiple different kind of ways. And one way I can explain that is I, I live in North Idaho. We have a lot of... Californians that have moved to Idaho, right? Most of them are our kind of peeps. They're our people. They're trying to escape this fanaticism that comes out of California. They want a freer lifestyle. They don't want to be told how to live their life by a bunch of morons that don't know them. They have fanatical belief systems in California and they want to get away from that, right? So I don't blame them for wanting, and, and this is why I get so mad with the California BS uh, that comes out of these legislation se- sessions and, and these politics out of California, is because it it it's kind of screws the rest of us over, right? Now our, our state is growing. In fact, my county uh, has in multiple times been named the fastest growing county in the United States, and now we've got traffic jams up and down the city of Coeur d'Alene like you wouldn't believe. And, and it's it's this catch-22 for me. You know, I don't blame these people for wanting to escape California. I wouldn't live there. You couldn't pay me enough money to live in California. But at the same time, it's frustrating because everywhere's crowded now. The lakes are getting pounded. Uh, we have all these new residents. Uh, the housing prices are out of control. The house that my wife and I live in now, if we were to try to buy this place today— I couldn't afford this place. I couldn't afford it in a million years. No freaking way. It's out of my price range because of the influx of Californians moving to the state of Idaho. Again, I don't blame them for wanting to get away from there. The other part to that is I'm talking about like the 90% of them that are good people that just want to live the American dream where it's still America, right? The the, the bad part is there's like this 10% of them that come here um, and I don't know if they're trying to escape these crazy politics of California, but they're showing up here and they're trying to purge our lifestyle and bring in that California craziness. And and we're, we're not going to tolerate that. We, we're just not going to tolerate that. And we're, we're, that's why I'm doing something now. And I'm, I'm talking to you guys now over this. Because in the article it says, California would be the first state to implement such a ban, setting a magnificent precedent for the rest of the nation to follow. Really? So, in Idaho, we are supposed to look at the state of California with your crazy, growing black bear population. All of a sudden, you want to ban it, because, and I'll get to the reasons why here in just a second. And you think that us in Idaho are going to look at that as some magnificent precedent, your words, And we're going to follow the lead? I don't think so. I don't freaking stinking think so. It ain't going to happen. Continuing on. The bill was introduced by State Senator Scott Wiener, D. San Francisco, and it reflects concerns over the fragile state of black bear populations in California. (laughs) Okay, again, 
It reflects the concerns over the fragile state of black bear populations in California. I don't think they know what the word fragile means. Clearly, they are misusing that word. They are misrepresenting the facts on the ground. By the way, if you are some kind of specialized bear biologist in the state of California and you have opinions on this, again, reach out to me, Jim at thewesternhuntsman.com. I'd love to get you on the show. If you're a wildlife manager, uh, wildlife biologist working for the state of California, the, the uh, fish and game, I believe it is, um, just let, let me know. I'd love to get you on the show. I've reached out to a few of them and haven't heard back yet. So, okay. The fragile state of black bear populations in California. Listen, guys. The, the, the black bear population in California is not state or is not fragile. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to read on and talk at the same time. The state endured devastating wildfires last year and wildlife there, including Cal- California's iconic Bruins, are struggling to forage and survive in the changing, changing forest ecosystems. And then up top, there's a picture of a black bear that says climate change has added to the stresses bear f- uh, bear's face. What's funny about this is they've edited this. It initially said global warming has added to the stress bear's face. And I don't really care what you call it, global warming or climate change, but stick to one of them because there is a difference between global warming and climate change. And so they, they clearly, they, they have, they have changed that. And that's what they're kind of blaming on all of their, um, you know, wildfires. Because when you look at this from a fact-based situation, it surely Cannot be the fact that California has no commercial logging operations, right? That can't be a factor in your crazy freaking wildfires that break out like clockwork every time we hit midsummer, right? Okay, next one. Keeping in mind, guys, the population is somewhere between 30 to 40,000 black bears in the state of California. Reading on, each year, trophy hunters kill more than 1,000 bears in the state. Again, do you you see the terminology they're using? Do Do you see the manipulation that's going into this article? Each year, trophy hunters... Really, really, the guy, the guy that buys a bear tag and or or gal that is a blue collar hunter that likes bear meat is a trophy hunter. They could probably barely afford the place they live in because of your crazy politics. Your cost of living is astronomical. A million dollars for a freaking 600 square foot shack. But they're trophy hunters. That's what they're doing, right? They're, they're trophy hunters. The average, everyday, freaking blue-collar black bear hunter in the state of California is a trophy hunter. That line just irritates. It rubs me so wrong, I can't even begin to, begin to tell you guys. Uh, this, this places unnecessary pressure on these animals who reproduce at, a, at an incredibly slow rate. Female bears don't even begin reproducing until they're about four or five years old. They only give birth every two or three years to an average of three cubs. And just a few of those cubs even survive into, adult, uh, into adulthood. I'm sorry, a lot of that's questionable. <laughs> that, that's, I don't know where they're getting their information. But um, if they're struggling to reproduce and the reproduction rates of black bears in California is so slow, why have they doubled in population in the last 25 years. Reading on. In addition to their slow reproductive rates, bear numbers are naturally limited by the availability of food, so there is no truth to the assertion that they need to be hunted. Amazingly, if a female is in poor condition, such as from lack of food, her body will actually reabsorb that her eggs in, during hibernation, and she will produce no cubs that winter. You know, I don't. There, there's nothing really I can rip apart with that. That's 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 true, uh, other than it is implying that the 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 bears are having a hard time foraging in the in the state of California. That's that's totally questionable. It does not align with the facts on the ground. Uh, okay. And the other last thing I want to address in this article, you guys should just read the article. I, again, I'm going to throw it in the show notes, but, um, the, the thing I do want to touch on with this. Okay. Most California residents are opposed to black bear hunting a whopping 70%. According to a poll conducted last month by the Remington research group for the humane society of the United States. Let me just say a couple things about that. Who in the hell are you freaking polling? Because I know dudes in California that live in entire towns that are very pro-hunting. So who are you polling? When, when you say the Humane Society of the United States 
hired this Remington Research Group that I know nothing about to take a poll on whether or not California residents are opposed to black bear hunting. Forgive me if I'm suspicious about your results. Like, who did you call? Did you call the the vegan sorority club and ask all the members on the Berkeley campus if, if they're opposed to black bear hunting? I mean, who did you call? Who did you poll? The poll also showed that 71% of residents believe that the state should prioritize prioritize policies that promote non-lethal method, methods to reduce conflicts between bears and people. Um, the, and, and it talks about fewer than 0.1% apply for a bear tag each t- year of, well, no kidding. I mean, California, when you break down California, you have these huge uh Areas like, you know, you've got your San Diego, you've got your Los Angeles, you've, you've got your Bay Area, all these all these extremely large uh, cities uh, that are, uh, I need to quit trying to read and talk at the same time. The, the population is way off uh, kilter, so to speak, in the state of California, okay? Uh, you cannot compare the opinions of somebody living in the Bay Area uh, against somebody that lives in Northern California in a rural county. Uh, and I know that those those voices uh, in areas like Northern California and rural counties, other areas of California that are rural, are going to be very, very different than somebody living uh, in the Bay Area or, um, you know, West Hollywood County or somewhere like that. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just there, there's just two different worlds going on there. And so it's it's ridiculous to sit here and talk about how unpopular and hated that bear hunting has become in California that we need to ban it. Guys. Here's the bottom line. We have to do something about this. We this this cannot pass. This this really cannot pass. We have to do something. Uh, I'm gonna link link some emails into um, the show notes that uh, you guys should uh, start sending emails to, and I don't mean just one. Uh, if it would help, I can write a letter that it can be just you know sometimes groups and organizations come up with letters. Uh, there basically all you're doing is signing the bottom of it and you're sending that into these legislatures to let them know how unpopular this would be. Um, this, the reason why we need to pay attention to this kind of stuff, guys, is this stuff will absolutely uh, no doubt without a doubt, there is no shadow of doubt in my mind. This kind of stuff will bleed over into our other Western, Western hunting States, such as Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, uh, Idaho, Montana, Washington, Oregon, all these places that we cherish this lifestyle. Um, this this is a lifestyle that we know the facts are are on our side. The facts are not on the side of these uh, of this kind of legislation. Um, I'll also link the actual uh, the bill, Bill 252. It's worth a read. Um, I know it's kind of a long read or or whatever, but it is definitely worth a read. And, and you guys should should just kind of browse through it. This is the kind of stuff that is going to really uh, set us back as hunters. I, I guess apparently the, the Californians did not get the memo. The, the, the politicians of California don't ever seem to get the memo. This is a state that's somewhere uh, around $11 billion in debt uh, with assets and li- or, or between liabilities and debts. Um, this is a state that has 200,000 people, give or take, uh, on, a, on the docket of the homeless rolls. Uh, this is a state that has massive, massive government programs that fail year after year. The cost of living is through the roof. To focus on something like this, for a politician in San Francisco, is absolutely absurd. It's, it's absurd uh, for a lot of reasons. Here's another way to look at it. I'm a hunter. You're, you guys listening to this, uh, you guys are either hunters or looking to get into hunting. Uh, and, and I'm way into black bear hunting. I, I, I can't wait for black bear season. And I can't wait to try my hand at filling my, my freezer with, uh, with black bear meat. I, I, it's, uh, it's just a, a huge focus of mine this year. As a hunter... I don't call people up like this Senator Scott Wiener in California and try to dictate their lives. I don't, I don't try to outlaw being a vegan. 
I feel like we live in the land of the free. And if you want to be a vegan, I, I want you to be a vegan if you want to be a vegan. I, I don't I don't care. Don't ask me to be a vegan. Don't ask me to stop hunting. This is a new thing. Politicians have, and I don't care whether they're Democrat or Republican, because this is kind of pro, this is becoming more problematic as as uh, as time goes by. Politicians, under the, the 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 constitutional makeup of the United States of America, have forgotten that we do not answer and work for them. They work for us. We put them there. We do not put them there to legislate our lives into some kind of socialistic uh, utopia that doesn't exist. That's not why they're there. We don't worship our politicians, our political leaders. We don't answer to them. When they talk about things like like banning black bear hunting or 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 d- infringing on the Second Amendment, for example, that is implying that the government grants us the right to own firearms. I got news for you. That's not what the Second Amendment gives you. The Second Amendment does not give you the right to own an AR-15 or a 22 or a 6.5 Creed Creedmoor, dare I say. It, that's not what it does. The Second Amendment forbids the government from taking away your right to own the firearm of your choice. It is a protection. It is a stopgap measure. It is a firewall to the American citizen against the government. And I'm kind of getting off track with that. But that's, that's an important thing to understand. That not only when when we start talking about a California legislature wanting to ban bear hunting, we we get into all sorts of different rabbit holes that that could go down and and consequences that are that are going to come out of that, and we have to see this as hunters. We have to identify and recognize this. This is what we cannot tolerate. And how do we go about this? And how are we going to fight this? I, I kind of I, I brought it up earlier. We've got to send. We've got to start sending emails. We've got to start making phone calls. I'm going to provide you with the information in the show notes for this. I um, I'm having a hard time tracking down. Big surprise, uh, Senator Scott Weiner's actual email address, uh, but I do have his staff's email, and you can rest assured if we're all emailing them that he's going to get the memo. And I don't care if you're in Texas. I don't care if you're in Nevada. I don't care if you're in Idaho. I don't care if you're in Montana. I don't care if you're in Canada, by the way. You need to email. You you need to at least send. I mean, make a commitment to send at least two emails expressing your lack of support or uh, your, well, I don't want to use those kind of words. Uh, Just expressing your disdain for the thought of banning black bears. If they get thousands and thousands of emails, they're going to pay attention. They're going to notice it. We've got to figure out a way to squash this. I want to help my 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 uh, my friends in California that are hunters uh, that are having to go through this. We need to help them. we got to cross state lines in this situation, and we've got to be there and stand up for them because I, I would want their help. If, if Let's say this had never happened in Idaho uh, this decade, uh, but it could next decade and the decade after. And if it does, I would want, my hel- I would want the help from uh, our friends in California. They need us. They, they really, truly need us. They, we, we cannot tolerate this kind of action from these legislatures that know nothing about wildlife management. And, and I'll say it again. Uh, you, Senator Weiner, you don't know enough about wildlife management to introduce a bill like this. This is an infringement on American rights. This is an infringement on the management systems of California. You are making a judgment call outside the parameters of what your expertise is. And if you argue that and you disagree with me saying that and you think you have a place to do that, you should call me. 
You should come on my show and explain your case. You should tell me why you think that banning black bear hunting is consistent with the North American model of conservation. And I'm going to leave that with this at, at, uh, we're going to leave it at that at this point, guys. Um, the emails are going to be in the show notes. I know this is a bonus episode. It went a lot longer than usually what I want my bonus episodes to go for. Um, but we, we need to take action. And this is just the first step of, uh, I had to get this off my chest, <laughs> honestly. Uh, but this is the first step in, in several, we're going to be taking at the Western Huntsman to make sure that this, uh, this disastrous, uh, SB bill 252, uh, does not come to fruition. We've got to prevent this. We've got to, we've got to fight the time is now to fight. And I don't care. Like I told you earlier, if you're just a weekend warrior, deer hunter out of Cheyenne, Wyoming, we have to help our friends in California because we'd expect the same back in the future. We need to step up for them. We need to step up now so that those bullshit, psychotic, freaking legislative uh, policies that they think are right and, and, and worthy of, of uh, passing through as a law don't bleed out into our states and our cherished li- livelihoods that we have. We're not trophy hunters. It does, it's not Being a bear hunter does not mean you're a trophy hunter. And, and the reason why they label it that way is because they're taking people that don't know anything about bear hunting and trying to convince them of this worthless cause that will be nothing but detrimental to the black bears of California. We have to take a stand now. And so I'm asking you guys in my audience to click a couple of these emails that I'm going to leave in the show notes and email them. Email them. Be polite. Be professional. But let them know that this kind of legislation should not be tolerated, and we are against it. We are pro-hunting. We know why we are pro-hunting. We are conservationists. The black bear population did not grow in the state of California because of the damn humane society. So hopefully, guys, make it happen. If you have ideas or you have thoughts that you want to share with me, I'm at Jim at thewesternhuntsman.com. Um, and uh, send that over. If you guys have an idea uh, or you have a guest idea for this particular topic, you know somebody in California, maybe they're a wildlife manager over there uh, that uh, or a biologist that, that can, can speak with some intelligence on this topic, I'd love to hear from you on this. Uh, make sure you guys are subscribed. Before I, before I sign off here, uh, I appreciate all the new subscribers on the Western Huntsman Podcast. If you guys are listening this uh, via whatever podcast uh, platform you're listening to, you can hit that subscribe button. That really helps the show out. I really appreciate that. I, I do want to thank my sponsors real quick. I don't mention them often enough in my bonus episodes. Scree Gear. Uh, guys, we have a promo code there. The Western Huntsman will save you 15% off in free shipping. It's a hell of a deal. Hoffman Boots is at uh, Huntsman 10, all caps lock. Uh, Hoffman Boots is the boot of choice at the Western Huntsman here. And last but not least, Phelps Game Calls. Uh, Huntsman 10 is the promo code there. Um, check them out if you guys uh, are in the in the market for, for any of that gear. Uh, I'm not trying to sell you guys anything with that, uh, but but if you do happen to be in the market for some of that stuff, uh, I've found it to, to be um, my go-to stuff, and uh, I, I like it a lot. So I feel like you should uh, at least give it a consideration. With that, guys, <laughs> I apologize I sound so frustrated in this episode, uh, but I am. Um, help me out. Let me know what else I could do to help you guys. If you're in California, you have an idea, whatever I can help you with. Uh, guys, with that, have a great weekend, and uh, we'll, we'll have more on this later, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. You made it all the way to the end. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. We sure appreciate your support. This is Jim Huntsman signing off and reminding you to check us out at Instagram at The Western Huntsman and on Facebook at The Western Huntsman. And you can also check out the website at thewesternhuntsman.com. Thanks again. We'll see you guys next time. Stay Western, and I'll see you on the mountain.